preceded by thunders with reflectometry. Dr. Freelander, Barrow, and McKay. with 
probably everyone's confused at the type of symptoms, sometimes a little variation, but their flow is dramatically improving following and or rectally on both sides, which is also notable. Um, in a few atypical cases, this patient presented with stuttering vision and on fundus exam had numerous fundus hemorrhages and power of the disc, if that can be seen. Uh, this was a preoperative study. After surgery, there was dramatic resolution of the venous hemorrhages and the um, uh, visual acuity and visual field. This, this phenomenon has been reported by Newford and his son in the Mayo Clinic. There's a venous stasis, a resolution of venous stasis retinopathy following into the rectum. Another patient which is very interesting here had intermittent stuttering of vision, sometimes from 2040 to 2400. Tower, probably early swelling of the disc temporarily there. Um, unstable vision and possibly some uh, cerebral symptomatology. Uh, he had a significant lesion on the affected side and a moderate lesion on the opposite side. Following endorectomy, he had resolution of the disc power on the hyperemic flow there and swelling. And more interestingly, this was his visual field preoperative when we showed the cut in the central field. Postoperatively, he had expansion of his visual field with retention of the central vision, which allowed him to go back to his form one. This patient um, had endorectomy for stuttering vision and possible cerebral symptomatology. The uh, symptomatology of the, the cerebral hemisphere is probably resolved, but she continued to have stuttering vision and no improvement postoperatively in the reflective range. So one day she had an epileptic event and was almost totally blind in that eye. We went back and reviewed the preoperative angiogram, or the postoperative, the postoperative angiogram was obtained on her because of this uh, uh, relapse in vision deterioration. And initially, the um, neuroradiologist read this as being a normal filling of thalamic artery, but actually, I took this home and studied it. Here's the thalamic artery almost totally obliterated and filled by the external. It really should come off right there, which is totally occluded. This patient similarly presented with visual symptoms and deteriorating vision. Had an obvious uh, bifurcation disease there. And uh, after endorectomy, not much improvement in, in the reflective gram, and certainly no improvement in visual symptoms. When we went back and reviewed it, uh, I think she wrote real good that the arrow up to the points to acute the growth stenosis of the thalamic artery. So this was present preoperatively, not appreciated that. Here's another patient that had a similar situation. Could not be the reflective branch could be improved after and our recommend visual symptoms continue to deteriorate. The bifurcation disease is obvious, but after we review the preoperative study of very narrow attenuation of the thalamus. The thalamus barter should fill normally and have a nice tapering caliber. As Raymond Berger reported, the unilateral absence of ciliary arteries or core flush seen here, these are the minor ciliary arteries, should be taken as an abnormal study. It's not enough just to say that the thalamic artery can be seen here is caliber and filling and should fill before any of the cortical branches because it's the first branch off the carotid in the cranial. We began to study more of the patients that had the uh, identified uh, syndromes of ischemic visual loss by the ophthalmologist and um, uh, to those in specific. The ophthalmologists, I must say, are not terribly aggressive about arteriogram patients, so it was uh, quite, quite a struggle sometimes to get some of these patients into the arteriogram suite. But when we did, such as this case with the ischemic optic neuropathy,